Hey guys, I got something I want to run by y'all real quick. If I had one or two words to describe Maddie Mae, it would be just an, an angel and that she was, she just made me proud. Kaylee's bedroom had a little screen slider door that led out to where she basically had her own little private balcony. So when I was looking at this, it kind of made me think, okay, if Kaylee was the actual target, right? Because in my last video, I talk about how maybe he knew this was like his last chance because A, she wasn't supposed to be there to begin with. She was only there to show Maddie her brand new SUV, which again, I questioned if there's no social media links, which there could be that we just don't know about, how would he have known that wasn't a stranger's SUV? How would he have known that it was still okay to go in because it belonged to Kaylee, but anyway. And I also know that we haven't been able to verify that that family member of law enforcement is actually who he's supposed to be. But a lot of the stuff that he said in an update video was true, and we found that out after he posted it whenever the PCA was released. Now, when it comes to the audio that is actually real in this case, not no Joe Mo BS or whatever in the world actually happened with that last one, honestly, I knew from the beginning that it was fake, and I don't even know the origin of it. I just stopped even looking because it wasn't even worth my time. The other guy had stated it was like 3.38 and in reality it was around like 4.17. But other than that, the whole fact that Maddie and Kaylee did not go to sleep in the same bed but were found in the same bed, that was a fact that we did not know, you guys, and he was like spot on on all of that. They hadn't fallen to sleep in the same bed. Um, one of the victim's wounds were deep gouges that were delivered with extremely aggressive force. So much so that the victim's liver and lungs were destroyed. In my opinion, I give that a little bit of validity. Now, it doesn't mean that he's right on everything, because obviously he wasn't, but he is the one who stated that Kaylee was not part of this situation, that her wounds were so much worse, and that matched what Kaylee's family had came out and stated, because he was trying to subdue her and quiet her. The man then harmed her. He was delivering it quickly and forcibly to quiet her. If that's the truth, then wouldn't that mean that Maddie was victim number one, you guys? He said, Ben, this is the day that we've been waiting for. I just, I broke down and I just cried. I could only take so much of that. And I just, uh, I, I cried. I still haven't read the rest of it. And then Kaylee walked over to Maddie's room, saw what was going on and there was a struggle between the two of them and maybe the sheath accidentally got dropped. I'm still kind of on the fence on how the sheath actually got there, honestly. Because to me, if Kaylee was the target, why not just go up to that third floor and go in through her own personal slider? We only know from what Dylan states in the PCA that he walked out the slider on the second floor. We technically don't know how he got inside the house. In my logical brain, you would think that you would go in the same way that you would go out. But then again, like I've stated before, if the rumor's true about the front door being wide open, then who really knows? But then again, that's even thrown out the window because then we know he goes back to the crime scene five hours later. But to me, that makes chronological sense. Maybe he would have chose that night because he knew that Kaylee wasn't going to be there. That Maddie's protector and someone that would literally have given her own life to protect Maddie was not going to be there in the room next door. And maybe that's why he decided to go in that night because that's whenever he felt it was safest. And maybe the only reason why anything even happened with Xana and Ethan in the first place is because whatever he went to do to Maddie got kind of pushed around and pushed back because then he had to deal with Kaylee and he wasn't he wasn't thinking he was gonna have to. I don't I don't really understand how anything with Ethan and Xana happened yet. The DoorDash thing has got got me thinking all kinds of stuff. Then again, the PCA only states Xana received a DoorDash delivery at four o'clock. It never states that she ordered one. At this point, I just think Maddie was target number one by what we know now. But like I said, that could be 180 from the truth. 
I guess we'll find out eventually, right? They went out together. They called for a ride. They went to a known establishment. They did everything you would want your daughter or your sister to do in that situation. We're left with not only missing them and exactly who they were, but wondering who they were going to become. A crazy case. See y'all.